That GPU came out 10 years ago, and I only just took it out of my computer. The, the why is because I actually upgraded my GPU, but I had to sell my old one first before I got the new one, so I had to live with something in the interim. And then the how was it was actually pretty okay. I mean, games weren't great, but games- Hey. This is my what? bit. Yeah. Oh. Ooh. I mean, games weren't perfect, but games earn everything. Check the chapters if you don't care about this and only want some specific topics, but if you're staying, don't worry, I've only got a few graphs. And first is, wow, 154 FPS average for CSGO or low 1080p. That's not bad, but what is, is the 1% low figure of 38 frames per second. That means that although averaged over time there might have been a lot of frames per second, there were actually a lot of stutters and it made the game pretty hard to play, even the menus weren't particularly smooth. Portal 1 though was quite a bit better, 172 FPS average, though as we know that doesn't tell the whole story, but even the 1% low was 62 frames per second, meaning if I had a 60 hertz monitor, I'd be having a good old time. But I did get st stutters below that when an extra portal would come into view or when there would be two portals in view, that caused some problems, but generally it was pretty alright. And more importantly is although those lows are much lower than the average, those lows only come from the time spent looking at portals, but when looking at portals it was consistently around those lows frames per second, and when not it was around that average frames per second. There was not a lot of stuttering, it's just performance would drop but still be decently consistent when looking at portals. And that continues to if I drop everything to all low, where the average is above 240 frames per second, and the lows, and even the 0.1% lows, are all above 90. This game is pretty reasonable to run on this card. Dolphin works, allegedly, I wouldn't know anything about it Nintendo, um, though obviously performance will depend on the actual game you're playing, and I thought that Halo 1 would be pretty decent to run, and maybe the original Halo 1, Halo Combat Evolved might, but trying to launch it from the Master Chief Collection, whether it's this GPU or Linux, I the, the menus were really really slow, and then when I got into the game, it just showed a black screen, played some background music, and never continued. And that's it for games, because genuinely is no insult to anyone still gaming on this card, it does still work, it makes no sense to review or purchase in the modern day. You can get one of these for around £30 on eBay, but for just £25 more you can get an RX 480 with just 4 gigs of RAM or a bit more for one that with 8 gigs that completely smashes this. And I understand that that's a nearly a doubling in price, but it's much more than a doubling in terms of the experience you can get out of this GPU. It's so old and with so little VRAM that many modern games, or even not that modern games, will just refuse to launch on. It. Despite that though, I want to know if you can just take out a modern card, put this in, and have everything work with modern software and things, because despite it probably not being worth buying anymore, lots of people will still have these, like me, as either a test GPU or one as an interim GPU while waiting for one to arrive. And for that, well, Windows 11 and Linux 6.4 just pick this up fine. On Windows, you're probably going to need all the drivers, and specifically the Ammonim drivers would be a good thing to read up on and see if whether you think it's a good idea to use custom drivers, but I hear good things about them, and they should be better for all the GPUs. They add extra optimizations that AMD doesn't. But on Linux, I didn't have to change a single thing. I took out a 6600 XT, put in an R7 260X with just 2 gigs of RAM, and it functioned. Obviously, that doesn't mean things were entirely perfect, we've already talked about gaming issues, but things were generally working. My ultra-wide monitor was picked up just fine, and I was perfectly able to see that there's a subscribe button below videos that you might want to consider pressing if you like in the video. However, it was only outputting at 60Hz, and that's not because that GPU can't do high refresh rates, but because my monitor is so high resolution, it can't do high res and high refresh rate, so I had to drop it to 1080p in order to get full smoothness. Gamescope, a, a Linux tool also used on the Steam Deck that lets you upscale and otherwise change how games display, which would be particularly useful on a weak GPU, missed. You know, like, missed a shot, because scope. Resolve, resolve never to load. VFR, VF, nah. Which is weird, because this monitor supports FreeSync, and so should the GPU, but maybe they're different versions or something? Despite that, the general desktop experience was fine, which was made all the more impressive after I tested everything and had a sudden realisation, which I'll tell you about after my results from testing things. General web browsing was fine, every desktop app that I tried to open was fine, and you can even still watch 4K60 YouTube videos 
fine. Though, keeping in mind that obviously the GPU was not outputting in 4K, and obviously I couldn't even use 1440p on this monitor. But, using higher resolutions for streamed video from the web is useful because that gives you higher bitrate, so it is still better. So, I'm not sure whether to say that you can do 4K60 YouTube on this GPU, considering it's actually my CPU that's doing the decoding. But, this GPU doesn't prevent you from doing it, so if you're just using it temporarily, it doesn't cause problems there. Navigate in the OS and just general animation smoothness was completely fine at my monitor's native 144Hz, at the lower resolution that I mentioned before. Which brings me back to the surprising point I mentioned before, I'm using Hyperland as my desktop environment, window manager, compositor, whatever you want to call it. I'm using beta software, and beta software that, that's utilizing Wayland. And if you're unfamiliar with Linux, there are two ways to, super simplified, manage how you display things on the screen. X, which is an app that you use to put wait, X, which is older, um, it generally works with more things but lacks more modern features, and then Wayland, which is more modern, more secure, things like that, but work is still ongoing to make things as feature complete as X in the things that were already made for X. And NVIDIA GPUs struggle with that to this day, though obviously it's, it's not horrible, but the, people still complain about their experience on NVIDIA GPUs. This 10 year old AMD GPU was fine other than one thing, which was desktop capture. I couldn't record the screen, so actually everything you've seen has been recorded on my new GPU. Sorry. Plus, it was pretty weird seeing a 6-pin PCIe power connector for the first time in ages. Generally now I think of some number of 8 pins or nothing because I've repressed the 12 volt high power stuff. But it turns out if you go back far enough or if you buy an arc card, being able to detach those two pins from your power connectors does have a purpose. And another thing you won't have to deal with if you have a modern GPU, the fan spin. Always. All the time. Every time. And it's kind of weird going back to, I have a pretty quiet computer, and with this old GPU in it, I was actually able to tell again. When you shut down the PC, you can kind of hear it uh, spin down and ramp down. I can't hear that with my, my current GPU in there, but with that, I could. And overall, it's really impressive that a 10-year-old GPU can work so relatively not brokenly on modern things. It's still a weak GPU, but it's a functioning one with an entirely modern software stack. I didn't have to downgrade anything. Which isn't all that surprising, actually, considering in the AMD GPU drivers are in the Linux kernel, and backwards compatibility in the Linux kernel go together like, well, remember how Windows 11 removed support for any CPUs older than Intel 8th gen, so anything older than 2017. Linux only recently even considered removing support for the i486 line of CPUs, which came out in 1989. <laughs> this was a shorter video, but I thought it was worth making anyway since I assumed some of you would be interested. It's, it's kind of cool that it does just still work mostly. Um, so, if you want to talk about technology, there's a Discord and Matrix server below. Um, hopefully you enjoyed. Subscribe if you'd like to, and bye.